Okay. Hello. <laughs> this is my first time streaming. <laughs> so please let me know if you can hear me and you can see me okay. I'll be drinking some of my tea that I made myself while I wait. How's everyone doing? I'm really excited. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay. Can hear and say, wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad it's cut. Sorry, there is a little bit of a delay between when I talk and when I can see responses, but hello everyone. <laughs> yeah, so my Friday evening plans are usually to uh, sit and knit. And I thought that today would be a wonderful time to just kind of knit together and work on some projects together. I have a project that I actually made a video on. You might tell from the name of this live stream. Um, and I've been working on it a little bit in the background, but I kind of wanted an excuse to work on it a little bit more. So I thought this would be the wonderful chance to do it. And yes, someone did pick up the fact that the border here is a William & Morris print. The Met actually has a huge collection of highly scanned and digitized versions of William & Morris prints, and a lot of them are available just uh, without any, like it's public use, no copyright on them. I forget the term for what that means, but yeah, you can use it, so. Oh, awesome, other people have the, their knitting ready to go and watching me from Denmark. I also saw a few messages that were left before the stream started that it was a little too late or like not a great time for people to start watching. I feel like that's the perpetual issue of being on the US West Coast is our times are just kind of inconvenient for everyone. <laughs> but this is kind of what worked for me today. But if this, um, if this is really nice, yes, they're public domain. Thank you. That was that was the name for it, public domain. But yeah, if this is something that we all enjoy doing, then maybe we can find a little bit better time or day in the future. Mm. By the way, I am drinking a, I make kind of like a latte tea. Um, it's vanilla and then I added like a sprinkle of cinnamon in there. Tastes really nice with some honey in there. And I see that some other people also have their knitting there Fair Isle socks, Stardew Valley ones, that's fun. And I saw someone else was doing a brioche scarf. Does anyone else have like, oh, a Gainsey, I love that. Knitting, crocheting, any other crafting that anyone's doing? Mmm. Market bags are really convenient. I think I made my mom a few and ever since I've made her some, I'm like, oh, it's on my list to make some for myself too. Mm, pink sweater. Oh, pattern testing for crochet vest. I see a lot of scarves, some brioche. The body of a sweater. Mm. Oh, and some quilting. I love like the variety of crafts that are going on. As you probably know from watching my videos, I do tend to focus on fiber crafts, but there is actually a quilt like right over there on my crafting table that I've been working on. It's a it's a baby quilt that I'm working on as a gift. So it's always fun. Oh, a first time cardigan knit. That's, that's always fun. I'm also, I've got actually two, yep, yeah, two cardigans on my needles right now. So this is another reason I want to do these is I currently have so many projects on my needles. I want, I want kind of like dedicated time to work down some of them. Unraveling a crochet project to restart. Oh, sometimes unraveling or tinking back or frogging back can be a little frustrating, but it feels good when you have a clean start and like you've tried it once and then you feel more confident about going at it again. Amazing. Mm. Okay, so I guess to kind of touch on what we'll be working on today or what I'll be working on today. Oh, and also if it's not knitting, no worries. I just love that we're hanging out together. So the fact that you're writing up your dyeing notes, I should have much, I've been actually doing some dyeing too. I should have so much better notes. So that's great that you're taking the time to do that. Like I mentioned early on, this is my first time scream streaming, so if there's any hiccups, <laughs> I'm sorry ahead of time. I was trying to practice a little bit, but the scary thing about live streaming is that you really can't 
practice the full on experience until you go live. So I hope this works out okay. So I'm gonna switch to my secondary view here, which is my knitting view. And you should see my hands on my desk in a second. Um, I'm so sorry about the state of my hands and nails. I've been dying and gardening, so they're a little <laughs> out there. And we still have like the afternoon sun coming through, but hopefully that's not too, too bad. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my hair was in a bit of a state today. So I was like, you know what? I'll just grab my, my snud and put it on. <laughs> and that'll be an easy way to do my hair. So just as a little bit of a refresh on the pattern book. Oh, it's upside down. Hold on. Should I go this way? Yep, there we go. Well done. <laughs> okay, so here is my uh, 1892 copy of The Art of Knitting. And this is where I got my mystery pattern from when I did my mystery knits. And here we go. There we are. So this is the page where we, are, oh, let's see if it'll focus for us in a second. And I can also, like later on, I'll probably just post. Um, this book is available for free on archive.org. It's So we're on page 82. Let me see if I can get that in frame. Whoop. 82, 83. And the one that we're doing is, I guess on age 83, is the round shoulder cape in loop knitting. So this is the one that I started as part of my um, mystery knit a while back. So I'm just gonna be continuing working on that and then hopefully chatting while we do so. And yes, I do, I have an up above camera. It's my, it's the same camera that I use for filming. So the one that you see me on, like my face, this one is just the webcam on my computer. And then this is the film camera that I use to film on. And so it's been, <laughs> I'm just like figuring out how to set everything up. I, I love it though, cause I love figuring stuff like that out, but it's also, Oh, you cross your fingers that everything works and that I don't, you know, I'm a bit clumsy. So if I like knock something over and I disconnect everything, apologies ahead of time, because that's a, that's a real possibility. But, um, is it a knit along? If you want it to be a knit along, you are more than welcome to. So you can, you can find the pattern and, uh, work on that as well. But just, uh, <laughs> the, Remember the yarn is like this pattern uses a lot of yarn. So just as a reminder of what we've done so far. So this is the one panel that I knit in the uh, video that I did. And it is a cape, a round cape, and it is done in loop knitting. So it's meant to look almost like furry or fuzzy. I knit it in blue. Maybe if you knit it in more of like a natural color, it might look like a faux fur kind of look, but I love blue, so that's what we're knitting it up as. I further have done one more panel as well as the collar. So there, this is what we've done so far, and I believe the pattern says that we need seven in total. So I have five to go, and I have cast on another one, and I'm gonna just work on that next. Oops, I do to untangle everything first and then knitting a jersey in linen slash cotton yarn i feel like that is such a nice like linen slash cotton is a really nice yarn to use for summer knits and i love linen yarns but they can be a little like i used a linen chainette for one uh, i don't know if you know my like flower sweater and i really like it but it doesn't have quite as much body as I'm used to. So it tends to hang a little limp um, and get like creased. But I feel like when you have that cotton blended in with it, it can really help. Okay, so I have to look back at my pattern because I actually forgot what I'm supposed to do here. I feel, I see a few of you mentioning that you're filming process with cameras and it being pretty chaotic. Yeah, sometimes you should see my setups for filming myself. It's it's pretty entertaining like some, the things that I set my phone or camera on top of to try to get the right angle it's not easy and especially when you're doing something like knitting your distance to the camera changes so as you can even see now the camera is like struggling to keep up focus wise with what I'm doing it is hard sometimes I want to show you guys clear things but sometimes my camera is just like I this is I'm out 
This is too difficult for me. <laughs> mm. The cape fabric is very squishy. I would highly recommend knitting this if you want something very squishable. It's really, really nice. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Putting the phone inside the collar of your shirt to film yourself. That's a, that is a neat trick. I think... I, yeah, I don't think I've ever come up with something like that. I've come up with some interesting contraptions, but that's a good one. Like, simple, but works. Fitting, fittingly knitting an 1870s kneecap. That reminds me, because um, Claude from Retro Claude, she knit a kneecap for the ball. And it was really, I mean, like, because I, I saw her when I was there in person. It was great to see. And I saw the, you know, her video on it, mentioning it. Um, let's see. What else? Where's my puppy? She is on the ground, so I pre-prepared some treats for her so that she would be a little bit entertained because a lot of times when I'm talking and she can't see anyone else in the room, she gets concerned as to who am I talking to. Oh, she's starting to <laughs> roam around my legs. She might make an appearance a little bit later. That chair that you see in the back right there is her favorite place to nap when I'm crafting and stuff at my desk. So she might hop up there or she might come up on my lap. Okay, so I need to, I'm going to focus for a second while I figure out my, my pattern. Um, oh, and yes, sorry, I, I see your chats and I just want to comment on them because I love them so much. So I love linen and cotton yarn since I'm in South Texas. We're in the month of, trip month four of triple digit temps. That's wild. I um, spent a lot of time in high school and that time growing up in South Florida. We never hit those type of temperatures, but I just... I can't imagine that. And so yeah, anytime you want to knit anything that you wear, I can imagine cotton and linen blends are the perfect ones for that. Oh, yeah. So let's see. What am I doing next? Um, I just finished a row of loops. So I think I'm just knitting plain on this part. So how many fourth row? So repeat until there are eight rows of loops. So how many rows of loops do I have right now? One, two, three, four. I'm on my fifth row of loops. So I'm doing eight rows straight until we then decrease for the top portion of the cape. And then I guess how many rows between? So five rows plain and then a row of loops. Okay, I think I think I got the pattern a bit. I might forget it <laughs> and have to re-reference it, but that should hopefully be okay. Oh yeah, the ring light, is that is a great idea. I have a magnifying and lit up lens. I don't show it much anymore um, in my videos because I haven't lately been doing super intricate work. I used it a lot when I was doing very fine laces. Um, I might break it out again though soon because I think I'm going to be start. There might be some things that would be nice to use that. Um, but that's a good idea. My my magnifying light does not have like a phone holder on it but that would be that would be a nice combination so you like both light up your work and you can film it Ot lights i've heard of ot lights i think i've seen them in the craft stores but i don't i don't think i've seen one Procrasto crafting yeah, I'm glad you like the number one. I like your name, Procrasto Crafting. I do a lot of Procrasto Crafting, and number two, I'm so glad I I do. I love um, knitting evenings or like knitting groups, and it's just it's been a while since I've been to one. I haven't been able to get to the one that I go to, so I thought, why not? Let's try it out. So there we go. Oh, I just see from Christ Christina, Christina, you're finishing kitty cat socks for your sister-in-law. I recently saw on Ravelry, it's one of my favorite pastimes is to sit and browse through patterns. And I saw a, 
<laughs> pattern for these kitty cat socks where the top of the socks had little kitty cat ears. And I thought that was super cute. I wonder if those are the same ones. <laughs> yeah, tatting with size 40 tatting thread. Um, so it's funny that you mention that because I, there is a store semi near where I live. Well, you know, it's under an hour away. So that's, I, I would consider that near. And I don't know if you have ever heard of it, but it's um, Laces. And it's the most amazing shop for supplies for lace making. And they have the most minuscule size thread and specific tatting thread, which I have had a hard time finding here. And I went wild. Um, so yeah, I have a bag. It's, it's kind of funny because of the way my camera is set up. Um, I don't know if you, I can explain it, but it's here and pointing down. And for it to not tip over and fall over, I had to weight it down in the back. And I actually used the bag of things that I bought from there. So I, I would show it to you, but then my camera would fall over. Um, maybe next time I'll plan a little bit better. But I bought like size 70 tatting thread is how far down I went because I am looking at an antique pattern and it recommended that the size that you like practice on is size 70 and then the size that you use for making the final pieces is size 100, which is just, I didn't go down to 100. I thought that was, that was a little too much. Even with a magnifying glass and my glasses on, I don't think that I could do that. I don't think my hands could do that much less my eyes. So, oh, you used to work at Laces. Oh, I had the most amazing person help me in the shop. I was so thankful. She like t walked me around the whole place and I was amazed by the like sheets of um, laces that were uh, like preserved, all the different kinds and like how old some of the samples were and you could just leaf through them. Oh. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, that jingling is Nutella has a little bit of like a potty pad outside and that's her letting me know that she needs to go to the bathroom. So one second, she really got to go. I will be right back. It'll be less than like two minutes. You can see the culprit of the break right here. Nutella. Do you feel better? Yeah. You wanna say hi? No, you wanna be put down? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. There we go. Oh, I like the hydration break. That's a good idea. I haven't been drinking my tea, so I might grab a drink too. Oh, and thank you, Brooke, for it's Lassis. Okay. I often don't pronounce words correctly, so I always appreciate help with my pronunciation. Lassis. Okay. Old Show Wrap Shawl from. Oh, tell them of us. Oh. I think my stream might be buffering a little bit. Hold on, let me see if I can fix it. One second.
I don't know if that's any better. <laughs> I'm, yeah, hopefully you can kind of hear me and see me okay. If there's any problems though, please let me know. I'll, I'll try to fix it, but I might have to do a little bit more research after the stream. Go back to knitting. Also, thank you for all the cute comments about Nutella. <laughs> she loves the love. I always tell her how much. I appreciate that. Still a little buffering. Okay. I tried to change some things on my end. I think I might have to honestly figure it out after this stream, if I stream again. Sorry. <laughs> uh see what's going on there. So hopefully it's okay that it's maybe a little bit buffery or stuttering and maybe next time we can we can fix that and figure it out better. And I agree reading comments is not helping with reading the pattern. I'm so sorry I hope we don't mess you up too much but yeah I love reading all the comments from everyone so. Tatted with size 40. Oh <laughs> string chronicity. Yeah <laughs> size 20 seemed large. I know it always seems so um, like whatever you're working on seems so small at first and then you get used to it and then you go back to a bigger thread and it seems so much bulkier. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Fist bump. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Is that Il Donoa? Donoa? I appreciate it. And love to have more knitting live streams. Oh, I completely agree. I think that would be really fun to just kind of have like a um, knitting or crafting circle and I really honestly so much of the joy right now is just me uh, reading about what you all are working on too which is really fun but where let me see where were we I think we were just talking about Lassis which I think is now the correct pronunciation and uh, yeah I bought I think I went down to size 70 thread which uh, I have not had the courage yet to pick up out of the bag and my plan though is to do tatting with it but I can't believe it I, I think someone up ahead like up above said something about a size 80 thread being the standard for tatting which is just mind-blowing to me I I was at tatting earlier a little bit um today and I, I was tatting with size 10 thread and it I feel like tatting is such an interesting um, craft for me because it feels so quick and at the same time making a whole piece feels so long. I, I don't know it's like the the time perception for me when I tat something is really off. I don't know. Oh yeah with Karina that would be really fun. That would be so fun. I would love to do that. I'll have to reach out to her again. I know she's been um, pretty busy but we do we do keep in touch a little bit so that would be nice. Or some mystery knits. Like, what if I picked a, a mystery knit pattern to do that you, like, that was chosen for me, and I pick it here and work on it? We try to work through it together. <laughs> that could be fun. The Delinear magazines? Oh, yeah. My, I love, I am so, I'm so glad that you enjoy those too. I find them so beautiful and so interesting to read. I have an entire shelf full of them. They're amazing. Bright yellow cardigan. Honestly, for a long time, I wasn't particularly interested in the color yellow. And then I found a thrifted, not thrift, well, I guess it was thrifted, but it was vintage knit, which was the biggest thing for me, yellow sweater. And it has been one of my favorite things to wear. It makes me feel like I'm walking ray of sunshine. I love it so much. So I, I really enjoy this idea of a bright yellow cardigan. That sounds fantastic. Mm. Yeah, with tatting, uh, what you were saying with flipping the loops, that was so hard for me to, to get right. Uh, I just, yeah, I, I really wasn't getting it for a while because I, I think I was also just learning from written instructions and that was I, that was difficult to understand what they were trying to get me to do with flipping the loops but I feel like once it clicks 
you can you like that it's easier to keep it going oh yeah those size 100 patterns my biggest thing i feel like and, and when i'm excited to try it on this tatting thread is i think i've gone down to a size 50 before i've tried it on a size 50 but the thread was very uh it had a lot of friction to it so my knots were like my loops were just becoming full knots nothing was sliding and i was still learning tatting too so it was i gave up on that one so maybe when it's specifically made for tatting my hope is that the work doesn't fully knot up on itself so maybe that would be better <laughs> oh yeah but it would i think <laughs> a chat with karina and doing some mystery patterns or just chatting would be a little chaotic but that's part of the fun <laughs> Mm. making an oslo hat oh i you know what i that has been one of my favorite things to do sorry you mentioned like resizing it for a different weight of yarn that's sometimes one of my favorite things to do because i feel like you make it work for the yarn that you want or the yarn that you have and yeah i think that's that's really nice also you might have heard the the bell jingle again this time i know she doesn't have to go to the bathroom unfortunately we had new neighbors move in upstairs and they're a bit heavy footed and she's a little nervous about them so she wants to be let out <laughs> when she hears them but unfortunately she it's also very loud outside so we'll just wait until she comes to a rest but you might hear a little bit of jingling in the background as she's just a little bit of afraid of the noises from upstairs and i just realized that i knit a few rows of stockinette when I was supposed to be doing garter stitch. So I just, I'm gonna have to go ahead and frog, frog my last two rows back. Or do I have to? Nah, I'm gonna. This is what happens. I end up talking and then I just kind of go on auto mode in the background. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I I feel so bad. I, I like we can really with Nutella and the upstairs neighbors. We can really tell when someone moved in upstairs because they're we can like I can literally tell which room they're walking to and from and I think she thinks it's thunder which is she's also not really a fan of but yeah she'll be okay in a second she'll calm down a little bit oh <laughs> you had friends who are an engineer and a scientist scratching their heads with you over the knitting math you know I have so many excel spreadsheets open from doing knitting math it's not like sometimes when you wrap your head around it you can make it work but I feel like unless you it can be pretty mind-boggling at times it's it's not sometimes super straightforward but it's fun I, I, I don't I find it fun I like all of my spreadsheets for reverse engineering patterns or figuring out vintage patterns the biggest one is a lot of vintage patterns tend to be in sizes and antique patterns tend to be in sizes that are well they wouldn't fit me so resizing those to fit me properly you've just finished uh sorry knitting single silk stocking at 56 inches per 10 centimeters oh, wow you're trying to recreate the long gorse oh 18th century stockings that is one thing i really want i'm very interested in uh, 18th century knitting and like 18th century stockings that sounds fantastic and I know um, Roxanne's been doing a whole series on stockings and knitting socks and stockings so that's that's amazing and I saw another comment a little bit further up from Eleanor who's saying I'm working with a yarn that it has such a different texture when knitted up than in a ball do I have any other yarns like that I had a yarn it was a bamboo yarn that I used on my knitting machine and in the ball, I mean, I could tell it had some sort of a texture to it in the ball, but once I knit it up, it has this, it's a bamboo yarn. And I, I personally like the feeling of bamboo socks in the summertime because they're not quite as hot. I always like wearing socks no matter how hot it is. So bamboo socks are really nice for me when it's really warm out. Um, but that particular yarn, I forget the name of it. I might have the... Um, the label still but it has this like crinkly texture which almost made it not full like terry cloth but it had a little bit of that and I personally really enjoyed that so I, I love that what what yarn were you working with let's see where where else were we <laughs> jingling is cute oh yeah oh she's just fallen asleep so she's okay now 
she just gets a little nervous for a while, so she's now asleep. Oh yeah, it makes you wonder, so with thinking about how delicate pieces were in the past, how do people in history used to lose eyesight by being a devoted lace maker? Yeah, I've heard about that too. I also saw, I saw a video on, I guess it was YouTube, but it was about bobbin lace making. And I, I don't think it was for magnification. I think it was for lighting specifically where they used, it almost looked like a light bulb and they fill it with water and then it magnifies or concentrates the beam of light from a candle directly onto the work to help hopefully a little bit with the eyesight so it wasn't as much of a strain. But yeah, I mean, even with modern magnification and lighting tools, I'm still struggling with some of the delicate work. <laughs> yeah, courses on uh, knitting math or like knitting gauge can be really helpful. I like the, I like the suggestions about that. Oh, chain net yarns. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. The chain net yarns are, I find really, really interesting. So the one, the sweater that I knit uh, was a linen chain net yarn. And um, it felt, for me, it actually felt really rough on the ball. And I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this sweater once it's knit up. I have incredibly sensitive skin and I typically shy away from rough yarns. But once I knit it up, it's almost got like a smooth finish to the surface. So it doesn't have, a, like I said, that's the one, it's the flower one. It doesn't have a lot of body, but I enjoy wearing it because it's cool. It's really nice in the summertime and it's it doesn't feel rough against my skin at all, which I thought was pretty fascinating, honestly. It felt very different. Oh wait, should I have been? Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Just second guessing whether I should have been undoing this particular row, but yes, okay. Here we go. Re you're, you aren't doing resizing math, just kind of trial and error. Sometimes when I don't want to do resizing math, I will like go up a size or two in my needle size and up in size of yarn. And I'm like, ah, it's probably good enough. <laughs> Hopefully that's fine. And then I just check it as I'm knitting it. It's harder to do that with antique patterns, but Sometimes with the vintage patterns, I tend to do that. And the spreadsheet for reducing your stash, that's a good idea. I i started and tried to record my stash, but for whatever reason, I have a harder time. I wish I was a, as like organized as Claude is, where she has her entire stash in her Ravelry and is working it off. Like I find that so satisfying. I love her stash busting series. It's very, very satisfying to me. Oh, <laughs> you made the mistake of using a bamboo yarn as your first machine knit project, ended up with a tank top. Ended up with a tank dress instead of a tank top. Yeah, that, that's pretty funny. That's the, I find that the biggest uh, issue, quote unquote, with the like bamboo, cotton, linen, they don't have a lot of memory and bounce and they stretch and they can sometimes be pretty heavy. So they tend to stretch out of shape pretty quick. I was hoping actually, I, you, I don't think you can see it in this view, but my spinning wheel is in the background. I haven't actually ever spun anything. I've just used it for plying so far, but I hope in the future when I get into spinning that I can make my own blends, excuse me, for the summertime of like bamboo or cotton or linen with a little bit of wool in it. So that it has a little bit more of that memory and bounce to it. I know you can buy them, but you know, it's always fun to think about projects where you can do everything from start to finish. <laughs> yeah, the head opening sits well, but shows my undergarment strap. So I have to wear a shirt under the shirt. I know that's, sometimes I also wondered that about some knitting patterns. Uh, I personally am not comfortable wearing like open lacing knit tops without anything underneath. And I'm like this open lacing knit top in a linen or cotton would be a really nice breezy summer top, but then I have to wear something under the top. And then is it really a summer top anymore? <laughs> you know, it makes me wonder a little bit. Ah, oh, that's, I, re I like that, the, that you found Ravelry right when you started knitting and you've diligently recorded everything. I think that's my biggest like 
sad or not regret I guess is one way to say it but that has such heavy negative connotations but I'm like I wish I would have found it earlier and I wish I would have been diligent about it because it would be really fun to see like how many yards of yarn have I knit and how many projects have I done I don't really have I didn't do that from the start <laughs> I think your name is pronounced Katrina uh all your knitting has dog hair and your own hair in it no matter how much I try. Uh, yeah, same, same, a hundred percent same. Nutella is in every single one of my projects that I make and a lot of times my own hair makes it into my project. I, I try, you know, and I brush her frequently, but uh, it's kind of sometimes how it is with these projects. And it's funnily enough, um, I, I've edited the next video that's going to come out and um, my patrons already have access to it, but it's about like as a little bit of a hint, it's about unraveling things. And I'm actually, I have one sweater I'm currently unraveling and I'm 99% sure that they owned a cat. And I'm so allergic to cats. I love cats, but they just don't do well with my <laughs> immune system, I guess. Because every time I try to work on that sweater, <laughs> I am sneezing nonstop. I think I have to like put on a mask and goggles in the future and give it a good wash after I'm done with it. <laughs> it just becomes, sometimes it just becomes one with whatever you're working on. Yes, spinning is on my horizon. I am, I am very excited. I ha it's been on my list for a long, long time, uh, but I just need to get around to <sighs> doing the spinning part of it. I have the roving and I have you know, what I would need to do it, I just need to do it, you know? And this is kind of one of the things, because knitting is, is lovely, but if we continue doing these uh, live streams, maybe I can try to spin in a future one, try some different crafts out, like have dedicated time for crafting, which is really nice. Also, yes, I just accidentally switched from knitting to purling in the middle of a row, so I have to frock back. <laughs> Again, my hands just go on autopilot when I'm talking. Ah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're back to the right one. Dog glitter? I love it. Yeah, it's hard. I try, but it's so hard to get rid of it. It'll be around for years to come. Yes, Madam Blathers, I do. I still have that wool. I actually recently reorganized my closet and I found it again. So I still need to process that wool. And I really still want to process that wool because it is gorgeous. So that is that is part of it too. So I want to spin, but not just spin. I want to process the fibers that I have. I have that as like a full fleece, but I also have a few <laughs> other fibers and things that I'd like to process as well. So, uh, so many projects. I feel like that's kind of the life of a crafter though, is you just have a never ending list of things that you want to do. And for those of us who, I think many of us enjoy multiple crafts, it's like the list of crafts just grows your list of projects. Mm. So that's a good idea, the Taylor, to use Ravelry straight for the wash instructions for each yarn. Uh, yeah, you don't want to ruin one of your knitting projects. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, more than one of my knitting projects have been ruined, whether by myself or someone who was being really kind and trying to help me, which is unfortunate, but yeah. That's smart though. That way you have at least the ins wash instructions kept with you. I love these. The comments about like your dogs and fighting dog hair and things. It's so, I don't know. I find it really sweet to kind of have your dog continue to be with you. I feel like maybe some people would feel differently, but. Oh, I think now Nutella needs water. <laughs> I'll be right back. One second, sorry. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> Are we good? I think now we're good. We started this stream right after her, I can't say the word, D-I-N-N-E-R time, which means that she's a little active, but <laughs> yeah, we're better. Okay. That's a good girl. <laughs> I think we're happy. <laughs> it might go to nap time. <laughs> Cool cat, you're thinking about trying knitting again. Any tips? Um, I mean, I think YouTube is a great place to learn. The biggest thing that I've heard is if you are a crocheter and you want to try picking up knitting again, continental style knitting can be a little bit more intuitive because you, the way you hold your hands and fingers is a little bit more similar to how you hold your hands when you crochet. And yeah, Claudia, I love it. Anytime that we go <laughs> away somewhere, hydration break is always great. Oh, and for learning knitting, um, I like the idea of finding a pattern you really want to knit and working towards learning what you need for that. And I can highly recommend um, a pattern designer called Tin Can Knits. She has, uh, like, she does basic pattern designs with a lot of tutorials around it and a lot of information and a lot of sizes so they she has like a very basic sweater basic pair of socks basic hat if that's kind of where you want to start so i love that <laughs> and what else what breed is nutella she is a mini australian shepherd which i think is also technically called an american shepherd but yeah that's that's what she is so she's Sana's a little too smart for her own good, but she has such a wonderful personality. I love, oh, I think I got a little cinnamon on my lip. <laughs> she is so much fun. I, we have such a good time together. And I like, Margo, I like that idea where you keep one of the wrappers or tags and sew it to the item with some extra yarn. So that, so that I guess that's when you're gifting it to someone. I really like that idea. What I also love finding is in a lot of these vintage sweaters, so I'm wearing one right now, there'll be a tag in the back that says like hand knit by so-and-so and sometimes on the reverse it'll actually have the care instructions for that particular sweater type, which I think is really cool. And I, I love those moments. I have a lot of vintage knitting patterns and in the back of them sometimes there'll be advertisements for um, buying those tags, like personalized tags to sew in your gifts and hand knits. I wish, I think they're still made today, but I feel like they're not as, like that seems, I found so many vintage knits with those, so it seems like a pretty common thing to have had at the time, so it doesn't feel quite as common now, but. Oh yeah, Claudia, crocheter who, you're, who learned to knit later. Your sister told you to hold the yarn like you do crocheting and move the hands. To yeah, exactly. So that's, that's what I've heard too. So I knit first and then I crocheted. So crocheting for me was actually quite easy because I knit continental style. And that's exactly the same way that you hold the yarn, or at least that I hold the yarn for crocheting. So I've heard that a lot is if you crochet and you want to learn how to knit, um, maybe look up tutorials for continental knitting because then the hand position is really familiar for you. Um, yeah, and Tin Can Knits, uh, the basic patterns are free, so that, uh, for me, that was always the biggest thing. Uh, when I started picking up knitting again, I was a college student, so <laughs> always looking for those free patterns that used affordable yarn, and so I, those were always the ones that I gravitated to, so. Oh, that's so interesting that you knit first and you switch to crocheting, and you crochet as if you were English knitting. I mean, I because it, it works right like it works also in knitting but yeah that's true I don't think I've ever encountered anyone else who does it that way but that, it's um, really neat how those techniques I mean I want to learn other ways and other styles of knitting I have someone who I know in real life that knits uh, Portuguese style with a tensioner that he clips onto his shirt which I think is so cool I'd love to like figure out how to do it that way like I, I would love to learn different ways and different styles of knitting too that would be really cool <laughs> You're moving tomorrow and half of your boxes are labeled craft. <laughs> You've only done fiber crafts for three years. Oh my gosh, yeah, the last time we moved, it was kind of, um, it was kind of funny because of just the staggering amount of boxes <laughs> that were labeled for my craft room. The movers were kind of like, oh my gosh, what, what is in all of this? <laughs> 
You have a hard time purling continental style. Yeah, so I don't know if you've noticed it when I've been knitting. My video, unfortunately, too, has been a little bit laggy, but I do something called combination continental because that's the way that my mom and grandmothers knit. And the reason they knit that way is because it's actually much faster to purl. The only thing is you have to watch out because all modern patterns or the vast majority, all is a very strong word, but the vast majority are written assuming that you knit, I think, Western continental. So it's the East Western combination. It's the way that your stitches lie. If the front loop is in the back or the back of the loop, like which way is your stitch facing on your needle. And as a combination continental knitter, my stitches face different ways depending if I knit or if I purl them. So I have to be careful when I'm doing bits of patterns like make one left, make one right, knit two together. My stitches are facing different directions. So I have to follow my way of doing that particular instruction. But my purling is faster than my knitting. I can purl faster than I knit because, so if I were to purl this row, um, rather than spinning the yarn, I think it's counterclockwise, I spin it clockwise. And that way I only, like I have to undo these, but I just whip them around and it is so fast for me to purl. But like I said, again, you have to adjust patterns, which is the downside to it. But once you realize that that's what you're doing, like the way that your stitch faces is different, it makes it um, that much easier. Oh, Nutella wants to go on her chair, but I have put stuff on it. So I have to go get it. Also, I'm dressed up from like my waist up, but I have sweatpants on. So excuse me. I'm going to go pick up and <laughs> make the chair nice, but you'll see my sweatpants. <laughs> Here you go. There you are, if you want to go up. <laughs> it's like the typical Zoom meetings when I was working. You always were like business casual on the top and then wearing <laughs> shorts or sweatpants on the bottom. Mm. You tried to knit Portuguese knitting once and the yarn over the neck. Purling is so easy. Yeah, I've heard so many interesting things about like the advantages of uh, like Portuguese style knitting and things like that. So yeah, also side note, one of the things I love about Nutella is I can literally tell what she needs from me. Like there's not much guesswork. So I could tell that just now she wanted to go on the chair, but she felt like she was blocked. So all I needed to do was move the pillow and the blanket a little bit so she could get... <laughs> Get up, yeah. Hydration break. <laughs> New woman, excuse me. New woman who knitted with a needle attached to a belt. Yes, that is, the name is escaping me right now. But in Shetland, I believe, is one of the places, there's a few places where they knit like that, but like for Shetland shawls, it's apparently, it's like lever knitting, I think. And you can knit super fast with that and you can walk and knit. I, another style of knitting that I wanna learn really, really a lot. Yep. Oh, interesting, you learned from a left-hander who showed English Continental and you ended up in a combination in addition to throwing your work. I had said, I feel like people just find what works best for them. And I have personally also tried English style knitting. It doesn't come as easy. I, it might be an issue though, because I've been knitting for years in the way that I knit. So I have just the muscle memory and the comfort is really nice and quick. And so it can be a little frustrating to feel slow. So I feel like I haven't had the patience yet to fully uh, try that out so, so much. Irish Cottage and Shetland, which are lever and it makes so much more sense. Okay, now I want to find, I want to, I definitely want to try that. So uh, those out as well. And I don't know if you've seen, there's a video out there where a woman breaks down uh, the knitting of, I think they, I don't know if they're lever knitting, but they are knitting 200 stitches a minute. Not that I necessarily need to knit that quickly, but how amazing would it be to find a style that you can comfortably knit that quickly in? So I want to figure out again from like, is it that kind of style and are they able to, and how are they able to? It's, it's really, really cool. Norwegian purling with continental. Yes, I've heard of that one as well. And I have tried it. Um, but my problem is I tend to go on autopilot when I'm knitting long sections of things. 
and then I switch from Norwegian purling to the purling that I'm more used to. And then all of a sudden when I get to the other side and I have to knit back, I have to really pay attention because then my stitches are all facing different directions, depending on if I remembered that I was doing Norwegian purling or my style of purling. So I, I, that is another really great way to do purling though. And you won't be, you won't have the issue of your knits and purls facing a different way. So that's a really, that's a great tip too. You have a knitting backpack and purse that allows you to walk and knit. Yes. Oh, that's, oh my gosh. I actually, I saw someone at a knitting festival doing that. And I was like, that is such a good idea. I would have an unusable project at the end of it because at a yarn festival, I am so engaged in what I'm doing. Like even now, I don't think I've even gotten to one repeat because I keep on messing up because I'm so engaged in what you all are saying and the conversation that we're having. Um, <laughs> not that it's an issue. I love it. I love chatting with everyone. Okay, so I'm going to go quiet for just a second while I count how far I am speaking of just to see if I can do some progress here. Okay, so now my question is, am I doing loops here? If I did a loop here, would that be correct? Let me just check. I think I got to do one more row. Okay, one more row. Yeah, that's the thing is when uh, I'm just reading through some of your comments about trying to learn different styles or trying to pick up different ways, the muscle memory is so strong. And especially when you've been knitting for a long time or um, for me, like I've forcefully trained myself to be able to knit without looking. I have, I can feel in the tips of my fingers where my work is and what my needles need to do. And so to just have the ease of being able to do that and then feeling so clunky when you pick up a new style, it's, I, I, that contrast, I don't know, for me is, is quite difficult. Mm. Color work is, yeah, that's one of the things with, I feel like some, some people have a great time doing it with Continental and some people have a really good experience doing it um, with English. And I feel like, well, that was okay. <laughs> Gotta unpick that row again. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right. I don't mind at all. Um, that with English style or like throwing style knitting, you can hold one color in each hand and then just throw whichever one that you're using. And I feel like that would be so useful and so nice. I love doing color. Like I love the result of color work, but doing color work is uh, sometimes not my favorite thing to do because I feel like uh, especially flat color work a lot of the vintage patterns that I do are flat color work and I don't feel like I have the best handle on tension with that especially with longer floats excuse me <laughs> yeah knitting anything more complicated than stocking it while walking would mess up yeah I feel like I'm not even walking, but just talking. Granted, I'm doing garter stitch, but it's not too, too different from stacking that, I feel like. Okay, I'm almost back. Now I think, now I think we're finally going to be <laughs> at the row where I'm supposed to be making loops. Okay, here we go. I was about to start counting out loud and I thought that would probably be a very <laughs> unkind thing to do for all of us who are crafting together and you might be counting too. That's the worst. If you're trying to count and someone interrupts you or someone starts saying numbers. <laughs> Stocking it in the round. Okay, yeah, that's a good clarification. tough to turn the work while you're walking. Honestly, I just, I'm amazed at anyone who does anything while walking. I feel like I have enough coordination issues just walking. 
Like I'm a danger to myself and others, honestly, with how clumsy I am. I don't know. I don't think it comes across in my videos at all, but I am, I am covered in bruises and scrapes <laughs> because I'm just, I'm a bit clumsy <laughs> overall. Oh, you knit garters while you walk. Five knit, one pearl. Repeat to size. Oh, that's a good idea. I like the idea of like combination, like holding your yarn in a combination style when you're doing um, color work. Like a co by combination, I mean a combination of continental and English. I've also tried those um, those rings that you can put over your finger to hold the tension. And I don't know what happened to it, to be honest. I, I was pretty diligent with it for a while, but I just, I don't know. I, um, I think I need a little bit more tension on my yarn than other people do because I, I loop them through more fingers on my left hand than I've seen others do. And I felt like I wasn't getting enough tension when I used that because it made me have to skip one of my fingers or some that uh, I would spin a few years so this is what I remember but I remember feeling like my yarn was too loose like I, I needed more attention while I was knitting with it only issue with <laughs> circular stockinette knitting in a movie theater oh that's cool with pretty good results the only issue was your tension yeah that's a, an interesting thing right like sometimes I'll notice when I'm going back over a row or a section that I need I'm like oh this is where I started a conversation <laughs> with someone because <laughs> my tension suddenly changed count in German that's a good Heike that's a good idea except for all the people around me who can understand German, which is surprisingly more than I would think sometimes. <laughs> you seem to hit every wall in the house with your shoulder. Yeah, yep, um, I'm with you on that one. You choke your work, that's a real problem. So your tension is really high. I used to, um, when I first started knitting, I remember my work squeaking on my needles. <laughs> it would be so, so tight. And I think I was doing, I was working on wooden needles at the time. And uh, I went to my grandma's and she was like, I can't stand the sound of these. <laughs> so she had me some metal needles and that helped me a lot actually. So now I personally prefer wooden needles now with my current tension because metal ones tend to be a little bit more strip slippery, but I remember. <laughs> I remember the squeaking. <laughs> I squeak so bad. Mm, yeah, the ring thing, the left pointer finger. Uh, yeah, that's the thing too is when I purl too, I don't know, uh, I'm doing just garter stitch, so I've, only when I was doing the demonstration, but I also move my pointer finger on my left hand when I purl. So that's also a good point. Maybe that was another reason why I didn't like it so much or it didn't really work for my style of knitting is I also use my left pointer finger quite a bit. <laughs> is the squeaking abnormal? I can't knit on wood at all. I would recommend if you squeak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I yeah. That's a bit high tension. You need st at least you can pr you prove that your yarn is very sturdy. It can hold up to your knitting. It seems Sia, you're saying it seems to knit looser than normal. I always result in bigger product. Knitting tight requires so much effort for me. Oh yeah. So some people like naturally knit super tight. So for me, I was, a, I, when I started, I was super tight, but some people super loose. So it's always so fascinating to get the right tension. Yeah. And I, I have a problem sometimes when I'm like, oh, I'm knitting too tight for this particular tension and maybe I should knit a little looser, but 
I never remember, especially on a larger project, so it's never consistent. So I always try to change my my needle size. And that was another thing. I actually recently took a um, knitting, like a finishing your knits professionally class. And something the instructor said was our yarn take up. So we have a stitch gauge and that we can vary with our needle size, but our row gauge doesn't vary as much from needle to needle. And how tall our rows are can tend to be unique per person because it depends on how much yarn take up each person has and that's unique to you as a person. So sometimes I'm wondering if that's because I do personally have a harder time hitting row gauges sometimes and even if I'm changing needle sizes sometimes I don't get the row gauge and I wonder if it's because we have a certain like uptake or how much yarn we take per stitch that's just natural to us. I wonder if that also has something to do with, I don't know, how tight we knit or something like that. Wait. Ah, you guys got ads? Sorry, I just saw your message that you got ads. <gasps> Hold on, let me just see. Sorry about that. I hope it wasn't too much of an interruption for those of you who got ads. I just looked at the settings again. You're supposed to be able to, like if you're supposed to notify you and you're supposed to be able to skip them. Like as I was reading through this cause I didn't want to show. So I, I'm just changing it hopefully so that I, I see the notification next time if one is gonna pop up. I'm sorry about that. I hope it wasn't too distracting. Okay. Oh yeah, you. So I'm sorry. I'm just reading through some of the messages. Yeah, I appreciate the awesome. Any any information you guys give me on the stream, I always appreciate it. So that way I can adjust. Um, but yeah, I I'm feeling or like I'm hearing a few more of you that are saying that you never hit your row gauge and. I'm, I'm absolutely the same way. I got so frustrated when I never hit my row gauge, but apparently it can be something that's like unique to you as a knitter. And if you want to change that, you have to kind of change a little bit of how you do your uptake. But yeah, personally, if I'm not hitting my gauge, I tend to try to change my needles or my yarn or else I'm just not going to remember to change the way that I knit naturally enough for me to do that consistently across a whole piece. <laughs> Eleanor, that's funny. Your cat wants to hunt my hands. <laughs> I'm sure I'm playing with a ball of yarn and a very loopy fuzzy knit. It's probably very enticing. And I also saw some conversations about some needles. I don't know. I It's hard for me to scroll back up at the moment, but... Uh, I have broken so many needles, unfortunately, especially that's the thing. Like I love uh, wooden needles because that's where I feel the most comfortable right now with how I knit. But the amount of times I've sat on them and broken them <laughs> or stepped on them and broken them. I do knit with some metal needles. I knit with, um, I have some vintage metal needles. <sighs> but if you sit on those, <laughs> it's not the needle that's breaking. <laughs> Those hurt a little bit more, or if you step on them. And see if for changing needle size to adapt a gauge, I, so here's the thing, like when I started knitting, I was kind of trying to save money as much as I could. And the least expensive option for me was a very, very inexpensive set of circular wooden needles. I think I'm actually knitting on one of them right now. <laughs> They're not the best quality, <laughs> but if you don't break on them, like if you don't sit on them and break them or step on them, I they've lasted me for quite a while, surprisingly. But that for me was the 
best way to start because I got like a wide range of needles for a very low price and then I could choose which one worked best for me for a particular project and now that I know that I'm sticking with knitting for a while I have gotten myself um, a circular needle set both a modern one and I have a vintage one too and I have like a whole set of straight vintage needles actually that's the other thing is if you have the availability near where you are in the US at least on eBay you can get vintage needles for actually a lot less expensive than modern ones sometimes you know iffy on quality but another option if you don't want to fully invest in like one of those really nice needle sets right off the bat you don't check gauge <laughs> you just pray yeah I that has unfortunately gone south for me one too many times so now I uh, now I do take the time to gauge although I am not one of those people because I have people in my knitting groups that will swatch a gauge and then like they'll knit a gauge swatch cut it off and fully wash it or steam it iron it everything that they would do to their final sweater and I, I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not at that point quite yet. <laughs> you haven't broken a needle, but your kitten has ruined a couple pair of wooden needles. Oh yeah, to chew on. When my dog was a puppy, that was her favorite. She chewed up a few of my wooden knitting needles. It was easier because, like I said, they were the very this very inexpensive set. I think it was like $10 or something for an entire range, but... Um, so I, I, I wasn't quite as sad, but if she if she were to get into some of my nicer sets, I'd be a little more sad. Yeah, vintage needles are, there's a lot of them out there that I've seen. And um, I use them just because I think it's fun to use the uh, like needles that a vintage pattern suggests for a particular project. But at least the ones that I found have been an entire range of sizes for a lot less expensive. I don't personally prefer to knit on straight needles. I'll use circu circulars if I can, but there are circular needle sets from like the 70s and I have one of those sets too. And some of them are nearly complete and they're a fraction of the price. The only thing, and that's what I've noticed with my set is it, it can be a little stiff, but I just put it in a pot of boiling water and that loosened them up and I was able to use them. So that worked out really well. You're on your third swatch with washing and blocking <laughs> for your next sweater. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think I would lose I would be losing my mind at that point too. Uh, hi Aussie. Oh, Aussie Yarny, you're from Australia. Blocking is really important. Yeah, that's true. It is true. Blocking is important, which is why I, I at least try to knit up a swatch, even if I'm not a hundred percent blocking it, but it's true. Especially for, I feel like for pieces that are meant to fit close, and I feel like a lot of vintage knits, they don't have a lot of uh, positive ease. If anything, they have negative ease. So you want to make sure that that doesn't fit uncomfortably on you. Oh, thank you so much, Men of Others, for sticking around for a bit. It was really fun to have you here. Oh yeah, Celtic Goddess, that is such a good point. I have, it's really funny, I know that when I start knitting again for a long time is my fingertips here, they start um, getting calloused because I push on my needles with these tips when I knit. And it's true, when you when you have, for me it's either the very inexpensive wooden ones or the vintage ones, they're much blunter, so they don't hurt <laughs> quite as much when you're knitting with them, my calluses aren't quite as bad. That, yeah, the metal needles, I think, are definitely a must for the smaller projects. I have wood needles, um, especially my my DPNs for smaller projects, but they do bend. And like with the warmth of my hand, I, they bend and that's frustrating. So the metal, metal is nice for those. And you like that the wooden ones don't clink, but I'm one of those people, I like the clinking of the metal needles. I find that like a very soothing thing. I don't know. Oh, the Boyle Vintage set can use modern cables? Oh, that's so cool. I have to look into that more. Oh my gosh. Yeah, seriously, this chat is so incredible. I feel like I'm learning so much too. <laughs> 
Blocking, we don't need to stink and block. Yeah, <sighs> I know. I'm, I'm also in that group where I'm like, I already knit a gauge swatch. Do I really have to go and block it? I also feel like, okay, to be honest though, you don't have to detach it from your yarn ball. You can just wash it on the end of your yarn ball, but sometimes like, oh, I feel like maybe that might be a waste, but it's, it's really not. It's, it's worth it. It's just, it's one of the things I know I should do, but it's hard for me to do sometimes. It's like ironing fabric before cutting pattern pieces. Okay, to be honest, I don't think I've ever done that. I know I should, and I know it's important to, because you want it to be in its, like, straight form, and you want to cut the... But I rarely ever iron my fabric before I cut it, which is probably one of the reasons why sometimes things don't fit so well. Chow goos will build up very impressive calluses. I don't think I've ever used any of them. I see them in the stores a lot though. And I've heard good things, but yeah, that's something I realized a little bit later is that it's interesting where calluses sometimes build up. And I was like, what? Why do I have this callus on the inside part of my middle finger? Like, what is this? And then the next time I was knitting, I was like, oh, it's because sometimes I'll use it to push on my knitting needle. So that's fun. One Girl Army. Hi, everyone. I'm a knitter, but today I'm working on hand sewing felt toys. That's fun. What kind of felt toys? It's like animals or some kind of other objects? <gasps> Eleanor, that is such a. Okay, so as I was talking, actually that came to mind too. I love my knitting journal and I've enjoyed like continuing to document things in it. That would be a really nice thing to add to the knitting journal is the swatch that is blocked <laughs> to the knitting journal because I currently just add like strands of the yarn but it'd be really neat especially if there's like color work to a pattern or some sort of texture to it to have that worked up as well and something to reference. I love that. It is, it is good. That would be very good motivation. I think that would be something that would actually motivate me to <laughs> knit and block a swatch. <laughs> oh, a lot of people use Chao Gu. Yeah, I've heard so many good things about them. <laughs> Felt play food for kids. That sounds so good. Cut out cookies. Ooh. I was actually thinking, I I have a very strong sweet tooth. And one of the things I was like, you know, after I finish chatting with you all, I think I might go make my like bake myself something. I'm really I'm in the mood for some something sweet. I I might do like a breakfast for dinner type of deal. <laughs> I have a mix for apple cinnamon pancakes that I'm very in the mood for right now. The sad thing is though, I'm out of maple syrup, so <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that just makes it so much better. Now you want cookies? Yeah, same. Now I want cookies. Does any of you use a knitting app? I use Row Counter. Oh, I would be interested to know as well. I don't use any knitting apps, so if anyone has any good ones, I'd love to know. Mm. You're working on a cardigan with a 1950s pattern. First time cabling, but let's jump in at the deep end. You know, a lot of people like to work um, from like the simplest steps up to more complicated. But for me, typically when I'm starting a new craft or a new skill or something, there's usually uh, an item or a piece or a thing that I've been wanting to make or do in mind that's been motivating me. And so sometimes I just really enjoy jumping in at the deep end and doing something. I think the first sweater I ever knit, and it's one of my older videos where I put the elastic in the neckband um, because I made it too big. 
<laughs> was a cabled sweater that I've been really wanting to make. That was That's my only thing with cables is I learned the hard way that cables tend to block pretty wide. So that sweater was supposed to fit me with no positive ease and now it's a blocky sweater, but I still like it. So I love that. I love the idea of just jumping in at the deep end and, and doing something because that's what you've been wanting to do. And a 1950s cabled sweater pattern is very up my alley, so that sounds amazing. Oh, I, I love the comments of some of these apps. I'm gonna have to go back and look some of, at some of them. Time to find a mock maple syrup recipe from a World War II era. <laughs> That's a good idea. See if there's any out there that use just ingredients I have in my pantry. <laughs> Some people just using Google Sheets. Yeah, I, I feel like that's the thing that I use the most is spreadsheets. I'm very comfortable in spreadsheets. That might just be the my engineering side, though, to be honest. That's just what I used a lot. So that's maybe why I stick to it. I also, I don't know about anyone else, but I tend to be one of those people who I read my knitting. So like I, I know in my mind I'm supposed to do five rows, but I'm not counting or keeping track and I, I'll count instead how many rows I've done. And if it's too many, like sometimes I have stockings where I have to do 200 rows of something. I'll use um, stitch markers and I'll mark the stitches every 10 or something like that when I can count to. Knit Companion, I see a lot of recommendations for many different ones, but Knit Companion seems to be one that comes up quite often. I'll have to check that one out. I wish I could find large circular needles and a 60 foot cord. Oh, 60 foot cord. That would be amazing. I was going to say, I have, I think I have a size 15 circular needle with a pretty long cord, but it's not, it's not 60 foot. Self-patterned cabled shawl with 50% alpaca, 50 wool. Oh, that sounds okay. That sounds fantastic. And you use a chain row counter from twice, twice sheared sheep that you can use while knitting. Hmm. My other thing too, I love physical tools. Like I love cute stitch markers and row counters and things like that. But I tend to have at minimum three projects on different sets of needles at a time. I, so I guess I would have to buy like... That would be, the, I guess, the pro of a Google spreadsheet or a knitting app is that you could probably keep track of those easy, more easily separately versus having to buy it like a physical row counter for each one of them. Mm. Yeah, that's the definite drawback where the way I do it, where I count is I do sometimes miscount. And if I don't mark where I've counted from before, oh, and it says something like knit 24 rows and then you try to count 24 rows after the fact. And then I'm one of those people who sometimes forgets with the way that I cast on, where is row one versus my cast on row? <laughs> what counts, what doesn't count? Yeah. I should probably stick to a better system for that. You could use the cable connectors to make a really long cable. That's true. I wonder what the longest cable that anyone has like knit with before using the cable connectors. Is that like a new world record worth going after, you think? <laughs> oh, a few of your coworkers have alpaca farms at home? That's amazing. I keep on trying to... Well, we currently live in an apartment, so difficult but i keep trying to convince my significant other that the moment we have any space at all <laughs> we'll be getting an alpaca <laughs> well i guess more than one alpaca they're pack animals aren't they 
unfortunately, I don't think that's actually happening, but that would be amazing. Yeah, I would also be like, hey, <laughs> so you got any yarn or wool or a fleece that I could use? <laughs> Mm. I agree with you too, Christopher. Um, Pegasus costumes that you enjoy getting away from technology with knitting, so you use paper and pencil. Yeah, this is a nice escape sometimes from the screens, isn't it? Oh, Chowgu cables come in 50 inches? I did not know that. That, so I, my brain is trying to I'm like okay I am five feet is 60 inches so that's like wow <laughs> that's impressive <sighs> you like to physically mark up a printed pattern I'm the same way I I'm also the kind of person who I love listening to audiobooks and I really like having the option to have a book on Kindle or like on my computer or something but especially books where I want to make notes and remember things, the physical copy is so important to me. But I like the idea where you've imported them so you can mark things up digitally. Because it, it does become hard when you're traveling. I have, I was pulling out this project and I had to go through another project to get to it. And the printed out pattern that I've been using for it is qu in quite a rough shape because I've traveled with it for a while. So yeah. It's not as easy to bring a paper pattern with you and mark it up when you're traveling. And for me too, when I have like antique and vintage patterns, I tend to not actually use the vintage or antique books because I, I don't want them to get in terrible conditions. I tend to take pictures of them and use them digitally as well. <laughs> Whereas you use the screen to keep the ADD distracted while the rest of you knits. Yeah, that's actually one of the things that I realized recently. I've become really terrible at just knitting. Because I've used it for so long to be the thing that keeps my hands busy while my brain focuses on other things. So if I were to now just sit and knit, I think I would become pretty restless. Like I, I tend to just have to have podcast going or a audiobook or some other videos a show something like that going in the background you used to do pen and paper or pencil and paper but you got interrupted and that made you switch to apps as insurance yeah i think that's the other like i I feel like I used to do a lot more recording of what I was doing and then I would either lose the paper that I was doing the recording on or I am terrible at naming my spreadsheets so I would forget where I put the information. And I think that forced me to become better at reading my knitting or at least good enough to make it work which is why I just kind of rely on reading my own knitting. But it's definitely, uh, it's a bit of a strain on the eyes and it, it, it does make me have to stop every once in a while to figure out exactly where I am. Okay, how many rows do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, sorry. Counted. My bad. Seven. We're at seven loopy rows. We need one more loopy row. And then we'll be doing the decreases. So this is where we are at now. This is a bit of a point of comparison. And then to hold it up to when I finished, here's a finished one. So we're just doing, we're doing the bottom part right now where it's all the same width. And then we're gonna be decreasing for the top. So I've done seven, one more, and then we can start doing the decreases. Also, I'm not exactly sure how long I'll stay on for tonight. I was thinking maybe at least two hours, but we'll see where we land. I'm still having a lot of fun. I hope you guys are too. And it's nice to 
like I said, sometimes I feel like I need an excuse to work on a particular project. And in my mind, I was like, you know what? For the stream, I'm going to be doing this project. So it's nice to know that I have dedicated time to work on this. Oh, also, One Girl Army. I'm in the, the exact same boat. I have a few sets of interchangeable needles and I love them and I love the concept of them, but I am also the, I'm the same way. I have managed to unscrew them while I knit and then my cable comes off of my needle and I lose stitches. I don't know how I managed to do that, but I do. Oh my gosh, you're currently casting on stitches with sport weight yarn. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was counting before. I hope that didn't mess you up, Celtic Goddess, but for a squid school of vintage knitting home front sweater. <gasps> I love it. I love that so much. Anytime I hear something like home front vintage sweater, I don't think that this is what you mean, but it just reminds me of like the home fire sweater. I remember Claude talking about it in one of her videos and I asked her more about it and I ended up watching the entire show and I enjoyed it, but yeah, so much of it was <laughs> for the knitwear. I was just like, oh my gosh. And what I love so much about it is that people have actually found the exact patterns, vintage patterns for the sweaters that they used in the show. And it's, it's really funny. I tend to do that in a lot of the shows or movies that I watch. I watched, uh, we watched Oppenheimer last weekend <laughs> and the entire time I was like, oh, look at that knit sweater. Oh my gosh, look at the vet sweater vest. That's a fair aisle pattern. <laughs> That's a matching sweater and skirt set. <laughs> I think I was more invested in the knits than I was in the rest of the story, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I love the chaotic tracking systems that some of us have where you do like the mix of what uh, for me it's kind of the mix of whatever works best for me in the moment but maybe not really great for future planning but you know sometimes it's it's better to just get started it's a lot like the home fire sweaters oh yes i I think they are so cute and that's another series of clods that I'm enjoying because I know she's she's been mentioning that she's got a f at least one more on the needles from that show they're so cute <gasps> yes all things great and small that's another show that I watch like 50% at least for the knitwear <laughs> their fair aisle things are so cute the curse of doing fiber crafts you're always looking at the clothes in movies and TV that reminds me I think there was a, a post somewhere online i forget exactly where i think it's been a few years now that went kind of viral there was like a movie with a guy with like an aaron style white sweater on that people loved like people wanted this sweater even people who didn't knit they were like i really want this sweater and some person thought that they were buying the sweater when in reality it was the sweater knitting kit <laughs> and they're like well i guess i'm learning knitting now because i really want this sweater <laughs> Oh, Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I know it's a, again, the curse of being in on the West Coast in the US. It's a very inconvenient time zone, but thank you so much for joining us as long as you have. I appreciate it. It's amazing. Have I seen the bar? No, I'm planning on it though. I think that's the plan for this weekend. I've heard and seen that there's some really cute outfits in there. I don't know about knits, but you can be certain that anytime I'm watching anything, I'm watching out for some really cute knits or crochet items, anything fiber crafted really. I love it. Has anyone drooled over the sweaters in a small light? <gasps> no, I don't think I've ever heard of that. I'll have to look it up. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I love when I see handmade stuff, that always makes me really happy I don't know I feel like you can you can really tell and especially in some of the shows that are set in like the 40s 50s 60s it it really shows uh the call the midwife has been some of my favorites for that I remember actually pausing the show once 
and like calling my mom and being like oh my you have to look at this particular frame I was like I was looking at this pattern the other day and it's in the show and it fully reiterates why I want this pattern it's so cute <laughs> I love it I I'm so glad that you all can relate knives out sweater <gasps> yes yep you just finished it for a friend yeah I love that Oh, I think one girl arm. Um, I think I have that the pre like the commercial for that or the trailer for that came on the other day when I was watching something. I didn't catch that that was the or like I didn't remember that that was the name. Oh, that's amazing. I want I definitely want to watch it. Have you seen the recent adaptation of Why Didn't They Ask Evans? I haven't. <gasps> this is going to be another, I hope, another amazing rounds of recommendations of shows to watch. If not just because they're great shows, but also because they have really cute knits in them. <gasps> yeah, I, th inner, I think I have heard about that one too, Margot. I don't think I've watched it, but I, rem I realize that I, I think I've heard about it. I'll need to read that article crying to remember this reminds me too of um oh mrs fisher's mysteries i don't remember any knits to be honest but i watched that show because i loved just the absolute style icon that she was like i feel like sometimes when the costuming and the things that people wear are done so well it's worth watching just for that. So nice is so great. A crime to remember. Okay, yeah. I'll have to write all of these down and watch them. This is great, honestly, because I sometimes go into like a mode of not really knowing what to watch. And so now I'm going to have a bunch of awesome shows and movies to watch while I knit. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a pause and hydration break myself. Get some water in me. Check on Nutella. Oh, yeah, she's doing fine. <laughs> mm. It's also really nice to get um, recommendations for shows and things because right now I spend most of my days just knitting and I think someone mentioned it before too is that when you train your brain <clears throat> to always be doing something with your hands when you're watching a show it's actually hard to at least for me now it's hard to sit down and just watch a show without doing anything with my hands anymore <laughs> What was I watching? I was re-watching, I think, Emma. The most recent adaptation of Emma. The 2021, 20, tw something, in the 2020s. And <laughs> I was watching it on a, like, a much bigger screen than I had previously seen it on with my family. And I kept on pausing it to like walk up to the TV to look at a costume more closely because I hadn't seen the detail in it before. And there is actually a knit piece in that that I hadn't realized because the screen I watched it on was really tiny and I didn't realize that it was like a little cute knit sweater. And yeah, I, I loved that. I actually want to know if there was a pattern that they used for that one because it looked so cute. And I know so much, so many of the costumes in that were um, based on museum pieces and makes me wonder if there is anything like that that exists either in pattern or in real life of a sweater, Regency sweater pattern like that. <laughs> sense and Sense, oh yeah, but I, mm, I love watching those while I sit in it. The trick with Miss Fisher's is to look at Dottie, not Phryne. I, I, now I, 
now I want to rewatch that too. <laughs> yeah, Lorem, I'm the same. I am the same way. <laughs> I think I did it in the movie theater for Oppenheimer too, and <laughs> my my significant other was like, "Uh huh." <laughs> <laughs> but at least he didn't have to endure me pausing it to get a closer look because there is literally I have been trying to find out when that movie is going to be streaming because I want to rent it just to be able to replay I think it was less than three seconds that this ensemble was on screen but it was like this deep forest green sweater and skirt or it's a dress couldn't tell it was so quick that it was on the screen but I want I want a closer look at that outfit it was I really, I liked it a lot. <gasps> you're, I Sharsha, you're working on Harriet Spencer. That's, that's the one. How do, was there a pattern for that? Like, where did you find that? <laughs> I haven't had it like I haven't sat down and taken the chance to look it up but I remember thinking when I was watching that and looking through it more in more detail it's like oh, that is so cute I'm sure there's a pattern somewhere where did they get that from is it a museum piece hi Natalie from a sunny winter Sunday Saturday morning sorry in South Australia I'm glad at least it's sunny even if it's winter I hope it's not too too chilly unless you like that I know I like a chilly morning sometimes. And sleep deprived. With all of the patterns at my disposal, how do I decide what to knit? That's a good question. I always want to knit about 10 times the amount of things that I could ever feasibly manage to knit or craft or make, crochet, tat, sew, weave. So it's hard. Um, but one of the ways that I've kind of managed to restrict myself a little bit or like pick what to do has honestly been what I want to share with you all on YouTube and it helps when I decide to do like series of things sometimes because then it's a little less all over the place and oh my gosh what do I knit next and a little bit more like okay this is part of the series and so this is kind of what I should knit next. As to what series do I pick or like what category of things to do, <sighs> oh, that can change with my whims and sometimes it does and a lot of times it's a matter of what's feasible and what is kind of a pie in the sky that's a little too out there because if I could I would make a lot of the really really intricate pieces but sometimes it's just uh, a little too time consuming for me so yeah it, it can be tough um, I think that's another reason why the mystery knit was like a nice change of pace because I didn't really have to choose a pattern, it was chosen for me. Like that step was taken out of it for me, which is sometimes half the battle. Um, but I also do enjoy, I will literally spend my afternoons browsing through all of my pattern books and my different knitting books and pointing out or picking out things that I find are interesting to make both from like a technical perspective but also from a uh, either the way that it looks or it's something that I've never encountered before in my modern life so I want to know what it's like or something that's typically sewn but now there's a knit version of it so I I kind of tend to towards the things that are a little unusual in terms of my antique knits and then the vintage knits I choose because I want to wear them. I wear my vintage knits day to day. So the ones that I choose, I, I have a long list of ones that I'd like to do. So it tends to be like the intersection of the yarn that I have in my stash and the list that I have going of what I want to wear. But it's not easy. I have, oh yeah, my list is long, long. You were literally dragged away from the ropes of a music, co music costume exhibit inspecting seams and lacework. Oh yeah, that would be me. I feel like that would 100% be me. I would, I think I would be get frustrated if I ever saw like an exhibit where I couldn't turn a work inside out. That is one of my most, like my number one things. I sometimes buy my uh, vintage knitwear online and I'm like, 
<sighs> can you post one picture of it inside out, please? I want to see the construction on the inside. I'm so curious. How did that color work go? How do they seam it together? What 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 is going on on the inside? I wish I could see a picture of the inside of it. I have, I think, a bookmark tab uh, or like a bookmark folder saved of uh, antique or vintage garments where the sellers have posted pictures of the insides or the seams or something like that just because I'm like I want to, I want to be able to reference those construction notes <gasps> there are pages online with captured frames from movies okay Lauren thank you I want okay I'm gonna go look that up you spent today working on your 1890s working ensemble for the Picnic in Alameda. Oh, that's so exciting. I think I heard about that picnic, actually. That's really cool. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be in town, but I love that. <laughs> One of the benefits of not having a partner is being able to look at something for as long. <laughs> yeah. For me, my other half has just um, accepted that that's kind of what I'm into. And so he'll just go entertain himself in other ways while I get my fill. I think one of the... I, I love animals a lot. You might have guessed that. Um, and one of my favorite things to do, especially when we're traveling, is like admire nature and animals. And we had traveled somewhere and we were like hiking in the countryside and it was like a beautiful evening and there's this like really adorable slug. I know a lot of people don't think slugs are adorable, but I thought this particular slug was really cute. And yeah, I think I spent a good hour with this slug. I was also very jet lagged, so I was a little loopy, but we had a great time. <laughs> he was just like, okay, you enjoy your time and I'll, I'll find you again when you're, when you're ready. <laughs> So yeah, I, I tend to get lost in my admiration of, of things, too. Knitting things you want to wear versus what you want to knit, if that makes sense. Yeah, Xanthia, I agree with you. There are some things where I'm like, this is fascinating, and I want to know how it's made and what it's like to knit it, and I think I would enjoy the process of knitting it, but I don't know necessarily that I would wear it. And I feel that way sometimes about a lot of the antique things that I knit, if they're wearables, it's like... Am I going to wear 1890s wool knit bloomers? Maybe once. But it's also like a really interesting thing to try to knit and make and understand what it was like and what it feels like and what is it like, how does it fall on your body? Like, I honestly think that's part of the reason why I started doing the historical knits on YouTube is I was like, it almost gave me a better reason to knit some of those things. And I know that you don't necessarily need a reason, but sometimes when you spend so much money or time on doing something, you're like, well, it'd be nice if I could wear it at the end. And for me, I guess it's kind of like, well, I can share this interesting thing with other people. So it's not just for me to try to figure out like what's going on, but it's for me and everyone else. But yeah, I, I, I get it too. How do people find historical events to go to? I have no idea where to start. I'm sure a lot of other people can also chime in, but if you look at like your, if you type in the, maybe not, if you live in a big city, maybe the city, but if you live in a area with like a metropolitan-ish city near it, then you can type in that kind of area and historical society or costuming society. And a lot of times um, the societies will pop up and then, they'll have like events, calendars, or things like that. That's at least how I found it, personally. Hi, Patty from, I'm guessing, North Carolina. Can we bring bloomers back, please? I mean, I feel like some of the pants nowadays aren't too far off from bloomers. <laughs> I, they are comfy. I don't like, I, I'm personally, I don't mind close-fitting things on the top, but I like very loose bottoms, so I like how they fit. Question, how would I modify a top-down sweater with twisted stitches? Would I need to add stitches? Oh, that is a good question. I feel like sometimes those questions, there might be some groups on Ravelry um, where you can ask 
questions or if you can find the pattern on Ravelry, you can also ask on there. And it also, I guess, depends on how, like, do you want to make it wider or longer or taller? Like, in what way do you want to modify it? I think that kind of complicates it a little bit and makes it hard to answer just here. But I don't know, maybe, maybe check on Ravelry on groups like that. Sometimes on Reddit, too, there is, uh, if you look on the subreddit knitting, it should be linked. There's like a knitting help group. And sometimes I've seen people post there when they need help modifying stuff. (laughs) <laughs> Crystal Pedicus says, Costa, you've been working on a chunky pair of bed socks and it's time to head to the hairdresser. Oh, it was wonderful. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoy the hairdresser. And another one from Australia. That's exciting. Adjustable skirts. Yeah, I feel like I'm another per- I love, I enjoy wearing skirts. But my biggest thing is always like, I don't want something tight. Like I don't want it cutting into me. And I'm one of those people I'm really, I don't like it. Like if a waistband fits me when I'm standing, it doesn't fit me when I'm sitting. So I like adjustable elastic things (laughs) there as well. Yeah, curators do tend to get a little grumpy when you touch stuff. I, I, that, yeah. Unless you can get like into the collection, that would be a cool goal. Like if you could get into the collections room and maybe if you have training on proper handling of stuff, it would be really neat to be able to get up and close. I saw, um, I forget on whose story it was, but they were looking at a museum collection of, I think either 17th or 18th century clothing. And one of it was like a knit vest in scarlet red. And she was manipulating it. And I was like, oh, what I wouldn't give to be able to be there right now. And I just want to know what the drape is and what the yarn feels like, how it moves, how the stitches are made, the construction of it. Like I want, oh, I wish. Imagine costuming an entire outfit for three seconds of a movie. Yeah, sometimes I, I, I sympathize. Or especially because a lot of the items did really look maybe not true I one of the things that I always think about in this is did someone knit it for this particular movie or series or are they wearing or using true vintage because there are some online vintage shops they are out of the price range I'm willing to pay but their vintage knits are immaculate like in wonderful condition and would look gorgeous in a movie but I also know and I've seen posted in some Facebook groups where like I I've seen a the crafter who did some tatting for Downton Abbey and it showed up in the movie and like you could see the screen capture of the tatting that they did, which I think is so cool. So like I always wonder, did someone hand knit this particular ensemble for to only be on screen for a few seconds versus is it maybe a vintage set that they're using? I, I, all these questions. I wish I knew. Mm. Good night, Lauren. Thank you so much for sticking around. <laughs> You should, yeah, I hope you sleep well. <laughs> Same with you, Tequila. Oh, Taylor, you recently got to examine clothing from the 1850s. Wow, sinking of a steamboat? That's so cool. How do fabrics and clothing hold up underwater? Well, I. That would be my guess is where they were recovered from. Wow, that's so neat. And I always wonder too, because I I do have a few pieces of antique knitting and like fabric and items of clothing. And I wonder how aging has infected them. Like, are they much stiffer, much more brittle? Do they like, do they move differently than they would have? Like how close to it, was it, is it now to how it was when it was meant to be used? Like, I'm just so curious always about the differences that time makes and, ah, uh, yeah. Oh, Taylor, no, you did three days of sewing and it looked amazing and they cut it out of the documentary? Ah, oh, <laughs> that would be so upsetting. I could understand why you were put out. Yeah, that would, I don't know if I would have the resolve to try doing something like that again. That would be so sad. 
Okay, sorry, the reason I went away from my hands because I realized I wasn't knitting because I am now at eight full rows, am I? Okay, yes, I am. And now it's time for me to do the decreases. So I'm just gonna look at my pattern again. I can show it to you, but it'll be upside down for you. I don't know if that's distracting. I'll show it. So we have eight rows of loops. Then we're knitting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I need to do five more rows plain. And then I do the decreases. That's the other thing I was looking for. So then I do 10 more rows of loops, decreasing at the beginning and end of each row. And then I cast off. Okay. So I need to do five more plain, and then it's time for the decreases. Thank you so much, Marie, for sticking around. I'm glad you had such a good time. <laughs> Let's see. Sorry, just checking on some things, making sure something called stream health of things, making sure everything's still running okay. Yep. Still looks like I'm lagging a little bit, but hopefully the sound is still all right. Like I said, if I do this again, I'm gonna see if I can change some settings to help with that in the future. Oh, it was recovered from fresh water, but they're in surprisingly great shape. The museum is a wonderful time capsule of frontier goods. It was coming from the east to the prairie. Wow, that's really cool. I feel like there's so much information. Like I've spent a not insignificant amount of time <laughs> reading up on things, but there's always more to learn and understand. And I, I love that. It's, this is another th reason why I really enjoy discussions like this, because there's always, when you have a group of people coming together that have different experiences and different interests, you always get such interesting and fascinating information coming together. I love it. And I always wonder, uh, one of the things that I was kind of looking into as an alternate career path is like co textile conservation. And I'm always so curious, like, how do you get started down that path? I don't know. I know there is, because a few, uh, like, historical costumers that I know are on YouTube have gone through the program, is it in Glasgow? In Scotland, for historical dress, but, yeah. The goods were recovered in the 90s, and they've nearly refinished, wow restoring the collection. I'm sure it would, especially depending on the size of the collection, it might take a long time. And Kansas City were there on display. <gasps> okay, this is another thing I'm adding to my list of follow-ups. I want to know more. That's so neat. Hi, Amokos Coltum, hello, <laughs> maybe? How did you teach yourself to knit without looking? I dream of being able to do that, but every time I try, I just end up dropping stitches. Yeah, I I mean, it definitely took me a while. I think the main thing, of course, is like stepping it up slowly. But what I realized is that I, my left hand is almost like my eyes. So oh, I don't think focus is so great on this camera. Not that it matters because the lag is so terrible. I'm so sorry. But um, I sit my left hand pretty far up on the stitches on my left needle, the ones I'm about to work, and I can feel exactly where my stitches sit and uh, which way they're facing. And I can feel the needle from my right hand going into the stitch on my left. And that way I help make sure that I don't drop any stitches. Oh, I think... One second, I think my other half just came home. Let me just say hi to him really quickly.
Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. Just want to say hello. He came back. All right. Hi, Beth. Welcome. Sorry, I was just on the BRB page because my significant other, he just came back from work. He had a late night, so I just want to make sure everything was good. And Taylor, the Steamboat Arabia Museum has a virtual tour. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I agree, Kathleen. It is it is a bit of practice, um, but sorry, as I was saying, I think the biggest thing for me to make sure I'm not dropping stitches is just I basically use the feel of my left hand on the stitches to make sure that I'm not uh, dropping or missing anything. So that's the biggest thing for me is I use my other hand um, to know where I'm placing my needles and where my stitches sit, and then that way I don't drop as many stitches. At my most relaxed, you knit with your eyes closed. That's cool. And you can do cables with your eyes closed. I mean, I guess I could technically knit with my eyes closed, but I never really thought about doing it. That's probably quite relaxing. But I cannot imagine doing cables with your eyes closed. That's amazing. Oh, that's a good point, too. I actually don't know how it would be to do it English style because you are throwing. So I don't know how you could maybe use your hands to feel where your stitches and needles are at. Maybe someone else in the chat has experience doing that and they have some tips. That's true. At the, like, you might notice that what I'm doing right now is, especially when I start a row, I like to look and I glance down and see what I'm doing. Um, so it's, it's not, you know, fully not looking. It's like, it, it's mostly not looking. I just lost where I am in my bed. <laughs> Hold on. I gotta count. Another amazing museum is Saint, in St. Louis. In St. Louis? Oh, another town name I don't think I'm pronouncing correctly. Campbell House. 85% of its original furnishings from the 70s? 1870s. That's really cool. I love those museums. There's a museum in New York City that was like that, and it was one of my favorites to visit. I really enjoyed that one. I think I'm there. Okay. Good night. Good night, Rebecca. I'll have to look back. Yeah, Rebecca, I'll look back for what you were chatting about. Um, Nikki and Taylor, you both can do it without looking. I feel like it's interesting. I feel like a lot of it is uh, when you have practice and you spend, like, you force yourself not to look, like, just by glancing in a different direction and glancing back down, you start to have a feeling in your hands when a stitch isn't throwing, like isn't sitting right, or your yarn isn't sitting right. Yeah, the, the, I feel like the feeling of the stitches in my hands is what I really use. The Bletchley Circle, yes, that's another one. I, it's, I have a list of shows that I actually wanna rewatch. Um, for the knits, <laughs> and that's one of them. I watched it originally uh, before, like, with, I love the knits, but I wasn't paying super close attention to it because I enjoyed the story so much. I want to rewatch it for the knits. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of people are able to, or quite a few of people are able to knit without looking for the throwing or English style. So hopefully that's something that can be, it sounds like practice and like getting used to the feel of the yarn and the stitches in your hand can really help to make sure you're not missing anything that you're doing. Hi, Lydia. I'm glad you're able to catch me too. I know I'm at least specific time. It's not too, too late, but it might be at other awkward times. Yeah, Nikki, that's actually, that's a good point is I, even if I'm not paying attention, I can also rib without looking because from the feel of the stitches, I can tell if I'm supposed to purl or knit next. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Oh, thank you so much for stopping by, Eleanor. I hope you have a good night. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I, that's the thing. Bletchley Circle was just the best intersection of so many of my interests. I really enjoyed that a lot. That's one of the things that I often say about um, like shows like that. I love the historical aspect of women in tech and STEM and things like that. Because it's like real life superheroes and paving the way for where we are and specifically where I am today. It, feel, it makes a, makes me feel really like capable. Like I'm able to do anything. I feel very powerful, <laughs> you know? Hi, Rachel. <laughs> Glad you came back after your shower. Hope you feel refreshed. Yeah, I won't lie. That's one of the things that I look for a lot when I watch a lot of like vintage based shows. The costuming can really make or break it for me. And I actually, what was I, what show was I thinking about the other day where I thought I kind of want to, because the first time, Agent Carter, the first time around that I watched it, I loved the general vibe of the show, but I was kind of more interested, but I didn't see many knits so I actually want to re-watch it and see if there are any knits that stand out to me because when I think about it I don't remember any knits in the show but I wonder that's the other thing I wonder is like how because I, I find so many vintage knitting patterns like they seem pretty common and I find a lot of vintage knits so it makes me think that they're quite common so when I think back and I don't know if Agent Carter doesn't have a lot of knits in them. Is it as representative, really, of the time? Can I reach out to someone and say, I will knit for you if you ever do another season? Hidden Figures, yes. Oh, I loved, loved Hidden Figures. Seriously, things like that are, they're like real life heroes for me. People who stood up to amazing odds and just oh my gosh it makes me emotional every time we think about it it's we have a because everything's streaming nowadays we don't really own a lot of movies but that is one of the movies that we went out and bought because we just love it so much it's steamy here to be knitting with mohair <laughs> yeah knitting with mohair i remember my mom because i started knitting again seriously when we lived in florida and i really like mohair and I was trying to knit with mohair and my mom was like you have to put that in the freezer <laughs> or else you're just gonna it's gonna be trouble for you in a while it's just gonna knit she's that was her secret to knitting with mohair when it was hot was put it in the freezer before you start knitting so it's not as hot <laughs> I don't know if it helped but it was nice and cool for the first few rows <laughs> which didn't make it feel quite as terrible but then it's always funny because you open up your freezer and then you just have like a fluffy fuzzy knitting project staring back at you which I typically do anyway I have some vintage sweaters in the freezer right now <laughs> oh procrastinate crafting wow you just finished the foot of your sock that's amazing you have been super productive I had a bit of a hiccupy start. <laughs> I had to frog a few rows in the beginning, but I'm actually on my first decreasing row too, so I'm I'm being pretty productive right now as well. That's awesome. You love watching the Tudor Farm series because it, yeah, I love that series. Um, it's something that I showed slash mentioned to my patrons, but I actually visited the estate where the Victorian farm was filmed, the Acton Scott estate, and I met the family, and they actually appeared in the Christmas special. So it was really cool to meet them in person and like see, I recognized um, parts of the house and like the farmyard and things like that. That was, that was neat. Super duper highlight of the trip. And actually my mom and um, the current, so person who runs the estate, they get along super well so that was really fun too because they they still keep in regular touch now even though we've been back i love that 
I love those. Real and so yeah, it makes it even more personal for me when I rewatch Victorian Farm. That's amazing. Oh, another Agent Carter fan. Love it. Ooh, Kathleen, I, I have to look at those suggestions. Do you store there all the time to preserve them? I'm guessing you're asking about the vintageness in the freezer. I don't store them there all the time, but uh, they are new to me. And so I tend to like to uh, try to remove potential moths from my sweaters that I bring in. Uh, the quicker way to do it is in the oven, but I don't trust putting vintage sweaters in the oven. So I put them in the freezer to try to help a little bit with any moth issues. Yeah, that does help. You have a smaller foot size, so you have a little less length to knit. <laughs> oh, the dressmaker. Yeah, that has been on my watch list for a while. The problem is my watch and rewatch list just keep growing, but that means I can do a lot of knitting, so I don't mind that at all. Oh, I'm glad you like the lace ones. Oh, Armenian lace. Yeah, that's another beautiful uh, topic I'd love to get into more. I I have put down lace for quite a while, um, at least lace knitting, but I do, I have some projects in mind that means I'll pick it up again in the future. And by future, I mean probably the next few months. I have, until the end of the year, I have all of my projects planned out already. Jeez. <laughs> Hi, Rainfire. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the first ever YouTube live stream I've done too. So welcome, I guess, to both of our firsts. That's fun. And yeah, by the way, if anyone is ever traveling in the UK, you can visit the Acton Scott estate, which is where they had the, they filmed the Victorian farm. The owners are, lovely um and they do host tours but i did have to get a private tour because they weren't hosting one on the day that i w had availability but look into it they also do um they host plays in their gardens so you can watch shakespeare in the garden it's kind of fun yeah so many amazing places to explore you're working on a lace sock right now oh that sounds i have a vintage lace sock and they just look so in intricate. I don't know. I'm, yeah, another one that just really amazes me. I have to look up what the dish is. This sounds so interesting. When you hit a slump or creative block, you watch the story of Yangtze Palace or reuse Love in the Royal Palace. I have seen those recommendations come up and the costuming looks amazing. I am one of those people who's like, I know I'm going to get fully dragged into, like not dragged, but like drawn into this. So sometimes I have to choose what I decide to watch or do because I know it's going to be just a rabbit hole that I fall down for the next few weeks. So I, I, yeah, I want to, I've always loved those dramas, but oh, <laughs> I'll be obsessed with them for weeks at a time. So I have to choose the, a good time for me to be to get a new obsession. You're finishing up on a shawl, Sarah. You've been working on it most of the day. Ah, uh, the shawls are. I I used to think, when, like what, need not need, but I didn't ever wear a shawl. Because I they don't I couldn't really find one to buy in stores at least like triangular shawls or more knit shawls. But since I've started knitting them, they're per I actually have the Shetland lace shawl hanging over the back of my chair because it's just perfect to have available. You know the AC kicks on or I have the windows open in the evening and a cool breeze comes by. It's like it's the perfect thing. And sometimes it's just the right amount of yarn. I had a baby camel. Uh, skein of ombre yarn and I was like I don't know what to do with this <laughs> and it turned out that I could was able to find the per like a shawl pattern that fit for it perfectly uh, I just yeah shawls were always kind of one of those I don't know if I would actually use them but since I started knitting them I'm very happy 
that I have them. So I hope you've enjoyed been enjoying working on your shawl. And it's always exciting when you get close to finishing up on a project. I personally, I'm a, I'm a combination. I like to knit for the process of it, but I also really enjoy the finished product. So I always get excited when I get close to finishing a project because then I can finally wear it. Rainfire, you're working on sewing some shorts. Hand sewing from bed. Oh, wow. I love that. I, for me, sewing is a less process and more product. So I really commend you for enjoying, like I'm assuming you're enjoying the hand sewing of the shorts. I actually do have a few sewing projects lined up for myself though too. I, I don't have any summer pants, I realized, and it's getting hot here. So I need to I got myself some like linen blend fabric that I want to make myself some of those like really blousey pants out of. It's one of my sewing projects too. Does anyone else watch Miss Crocom from English Heritage? Yes. Yes, Kelly, I do. I, I am in the same boat though. I feel like I have to choose when I watch that because it makes me so hungry and it makes me want to eat it. I also watch um, the Townsend's channel sometimes and especially their sweets. Whenever they cook anything sweet, I'm like, oh man, now I really want to, <laughs> now I really want to eat. Yeah, so that's a good point, Sarah, with the shawls. In the office, it tends to be colder and it's really, oh yeah, the shawl pins. I always see the shawl pins at the yarn shows and before I knit shawls, I was always like, man, I wish. And now that I have them, I feel like I have a, an excuse to pick up some of those really cool shawl pins. They make some really beautiful designs. Linen pants. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I was debating between pure linen and like a linen blend, but I decided to go for the linen blend so that they wouldn't be like, my hope is that I don't have to iron them, <laughs> but I don't know. You like hand sewing? Oh, I'm glad you like hand sewing. And it's so cool that you did your work from a Singer 1904. Is that a hand crank that you have? Foot treadle? I love, I love old sewing machines. I think that's one of the things I am glad that I leaned into a little bit because sewing for me used to be, I'm personally, I don't find a lot of enjoyment using a modern sewing machine and sewing in that way. But when I leaned into building, like piecing together basically my antique machine, I loved the process of sewing so much more because I loved my sewing machine. So that's, that's cool. I love that. Tasting history. Yes, 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 yes. Tasting history is another great with Max Miller. He's, he did a recipe off. Oh, I think it was around the new year, one year. And I ended up like driving out and getting the ingredients because it sounded so good. I really wanted to try it and it tasted really good. I enjoyed it. Oh, I like the idea of nutmeg as a sibling for Nutella. That would be great. Nutmeg and Nutella. I do sometimes feel a little silly <laughs> saying Nutella's name in public, but it makes me laugh. And I think that's also a wonderful thing. A Felix cardigan, the second cuff. <gasps> Oh, I feel like that's going to be a beautiful thing to wear on your trip to Europe in the fall time. Oh, I, I love wearing handmade things in general, but I feel like when you've had something in your mind to wear for an event or a trip or something, and you do manage to finish it in time, it's just, it's like that extra level of satisfaction. I don't know. It's, it's very, it's like real, it feels like an accomplishment and like super satisfying. I don't know. Yes, Celtic Goddess. That's exactly what I got. It was a it's a 50-50 linen rayon blend. So I I am hoping that I won't have to iron it quite as much. I might have to do I do like a like I hang it on a hanger after the dryer and I like stroke it down with my hands. I'm hoping that that will be enough for that blend. Oh, I don't think I've ever watched Dylan B. Hollis. Ah, again amazing recommendations. I'm gonna have to look that one up too. <laughs> it is true. Sometimes I'm like, why am I ironing these things when they're just gonna crease when I wear them? So that's why I 
I try to get things that don't need to be ironed or like I said that are it's enough that I just like I when I put it on the hanger and I go like this that it's hopefully decent couscous for a cat that's an amazing name I I love food pet names for me I love it Mm. I think that's the one thing for me that I love the winter and the fall time because I love colder weather, but I think it's also because I can layer up in all of the different layers of things that I've made. I love it when it's colder weather so I can both wear all the things that I knit and have it be a little bit more comfortable when I knit. Although I will say here in the Bay, especially the closer you live to San Francisco, you, we don't really get that hot of a summer, but if you live further south it, it definitely gets hot but thankfully I, I don't live too far in so it doesn't get too too hot here oh thank you yeah I'm sorry it might be a little hard to tell what I'm knitting on because I think the lag of my stream is pretty bad um, but I'm knitting like a little loopy round cape I'm trying to remember that I'm currently doing decreased it, uh, rows, so I have to decrease at the start and end of the loop B rows now. Oh my gosh, it's 117 degrees. That's wild. I remember uh, my birthday is in the summer, and I remember one summer it got to over 100 degrees on my birthday, and I was just like, Oh my gosh. I don't I can't even imagine 117. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. You had a bunny named Pringles and your name is cat is named Bandicoot. Oh. Both fantastic names. Cantaloupe and you call Candy's a great nickname for cantaloupe. When we picked the name for Nutella, we were like, it's Nutella, but we'll call her Ella for short. Can you guess how many times in her life we've actually called her Ella? Does she even respond to Ella? No. Oh, I ran out of yarn. I have to grab another ball. But I, I love that you actually call him like by the... Because Candy's a great nickname. Nutella just got her nicknames naturally because she's a little bit nutty. So we call her Nutters, or Nugget, Chicken Nugget, most recently Nugs, I don't know why. <laughs> oh gosh, how do I chan? Ooh, this is going to be not easy. You know what? I'm just going to start fresh, and then I'll sew in the ends later. You're from Arizona, but you live in the Oregon coast and you don't miss the daily temps. Oh my gosh, yeah, Arizona. I feel like you could literally fry an egg on the sidewalk there. And hi, hi, is Annalena, Annalena from Finland. Welcome. You like watching Turkish series when you knit or crochet. Oh, that's cool. Because characters will be crocheting in a scene. That's really neat. I love when I can see people doing the crafts in the particular scene, too. Cora, Like from The Last Airbender? Because if so, I love that. I'm watermelon. <laughs> I love the names, or like the words that your pets will respond to, even if it's not their name, because they associate it with great things. Oh yeah, over in Montreal, you guys had the wild fires. Usually that's the case for us here in the West Coast in California. <laughs> Brooke, that's really funny. <laughs> the one Halloween costume I always consider for Nutella every year is uh, a costume of like, it looks like a factory. And it says like poop factory on the side, I know. <laughs> Cause that's just what it feels like, honestly. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I sometimes I think there was a trend a while back that was like, tell me your dog's or your pet's name and their evolution to their current nickname. And I love the like really far apart ones, but then when you get down the progression of the nicknames, like it somehow makes sense. I don't know. That's wonderful to me. Legend of Korra, yes. I love it. <gasps> Xanthia, that's fantastic. And four yarn shops, you stopped at four cities and four yarn shops on the train on the way. I used to, weirdly enough, I have had really long commutes in my life and I don't mind a long commute when it's on a train or a bus because it means that I can knit without like major interruptions. And that just is what made me think about when you're talking about like knitting on an Amtrak train or stopping at yarn shops because you're on an Amtrak train. I also imagine it was a great time to do a whole bunch of knitting or crafting. I love that. Oh, thank you so much, Drink in a City. I hope you enjoy the late supper. Yeah, that makes me wonder, like, were you always on the same train on the Amtrak? And then at the stops, you were able to have enough time to get off and then go to a city in the yarn shops? Or did you have to like take a few different trips? That's so fascinating to me that you can do that on the Amtrak. All I know, unfortunately, about the Amtrak is I used to uh, work in the Northeast. And so I would take the trains to work every morning. And on the board, the Amtrak trains were always delayed. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> that was my only experience with them. Oh, that's so cool. Oh yeah, that makes sense. The train only stops for a few minutes at the station, but if you spend a few nights in each city, I love that. And such a, I don't know, I miss trains. I'm, as many of you probably know, I'm originally from Germany. And so growing up there, going back there, loved taking the trains around places. And it doesn't feel as doable here, but maybe if the train from Seattle to San Jose, that sounds nice. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I love all these ideas for trips to take. I And that's the nicest thing for me too, is sometimes um, I was talking about this actually with, with my other half the other day is sometimes it's so nice to travel or like to fly or something. Cause the travel bits are some of the times where you are fully like down and offline or disconnected. At least we try to make it. So it's, it's like a super nice way to just be able to kind of disconnect for a little bit. And I just love being on a train and like slowly seeing the scenery roll by while you're working on something and maybe with like an audiobook in. It's always super relaxing. Actually, what's really funny, I don't know why I just thought about this, probably because I'm, I'm thinking about potentially heading to bed soon. Um, one of the ways that I've been falling asleep is basically with adult bedtime stories from Calm. I don't know if any of you have heard of those, but some of my favorites are taking train journeys with that and it's basically just someone telling you a beautiful story about taking a train through the countryside and sometimes they'll even add in like the sound of the train going over train tracks and one of the ones that i recently discovered is actually a train journey i think in the uk in the 1930s and i don't think that you could hit more of my like <laughs> interest together maybe if she was knitting on the journey as well but yeah if you have the ability to spend your money on something like that and you like the sound of that, I can recommend it. I can finally actually fall asleep. It's very relaxing. <laughs> mm. 
Mm. A vintage train trip to take your knitting. That sounds wonderful. Oh, I see. I think, Heather, you're saying that Amtrak always gets delayed because they're barring the right of way of track that are owned by freight companies. That's unfortunate. And that's why they're always delayed. Mm. Oh, no, you got stuck for a few hours in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's unfortunately has always been uh, my experience, or at least I just took trains in the Northeast. I don't think I ever took an Amtrak, but I took other trains and I unf I always got stuck in the most random places and I had like he had to come drive two hours to come get me because <laughs> I we ended up being dropped off somewhere that had no other transportation in the middle of the night. Oh, that yeah, bedtime stories. Uh, it's so interesting because I. I always explain it, it's like bedtime stories, but for adults, because it is, you know, it's geared not towards kids, but there's kids ones that I listen to as well, because it's like, oh, like on your homestead and you're putting your garden together and things like that. I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> so if, if we had a better train network in the US, I feel like I would take it all the time. I love traveling by train. Yeah, that is true, Nikki. I feel like California knitting isn't as big of a thing because it's maybe not as cold here all the time. And maybe that felt like the case a little bit when I was down in Florida too. I feel like it's, I had a bigger community when I lived in the Northeast, but it's so nice to see so many people. I, I guess it makes sense also because of what time it is right now. I'm actually probably thinking about winding down in a little bit here but it was super nice to be able to chat with you all and knit and craft I made I made pretty good progress personally I did at least two decrease rows how many am I at yeah I did two decrease rows so I only have eight to go and each one gets quicker because I keep decreasing at the start so I feel like I make good progress I hope you all were able to maybe get some crafting done or you enjoyed hanging out as well together. And yeah, I, I, I've enjoyed this. So I think I might do another stream in the future. I'll definitely make it another like scheduled stream so that you'll get an, like some sort of notification or pop up that I'm doing it. I'll try to move it a little bit earlier so that it'll work for us West Coasters, but maybe some East Coasters a little bit better too. Oh, I'm glad I was able to keep a few people company. This is really nice. Hey, we got a couple inches done on some of our work. That's always so fun. I love, I wish I could see. <laughs> That's the my one thing is like, I wish I could see your projects too and see what you're working on and how you've been doing. Oh yeah, I think after all the food and stuff we were talking about, I think what I might do is bake myself something. I think I might make those pancakes and put on one of the shows. We got a few really good recommendations today. I might put on one of them or one of the other ones that I have on my list that I've been wanting to watch. I don't know if I'll knit, I might, if I do knit, I don't know if I'll knit on this project because it does require a little bit more concentration for me to do the loops and I, I did mess it up a few times. So I might grab a different one. That's a little bit more mindless for me to work on. Oh, I'm glad so many people enjoyed this. <laughs> this is so nice. It's a nice way to spend a Friday evening for me too. I knew I was going to knit anyway, so it's lovely to do it with a little bit of company. I really appreciate you all. Uh, okay, well, I think I might sign off. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go <laughs> make myself some 9 p.m. pancakes. <laughs> but I'll see you again really soon. And I do have a video coming out soon. I don't know how soon, but in a few days probably.
how awesome. I see some people have ways for me to see their projects, so I might go look them up too. Ah, wonderful. Good night or good morning, depending on where you are, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye, everyone.